one f- separate from a Manischewitz matzah box. I'm joking. It's embarrassing when you hear a guy like this says, I'm telling him not to practice the laws of the, of the Bible. I didn't say that. I never said it. My, my point is the exact opposite. But the religious zealots, to put it in a, in a plain English, religious zealots don't like anybody talking about the Bible except themselves. And this is part and, pro- part, of, part and parcel of the whole problem with religion from my point of view. It's a hierarchy established in order to bamboozle the ignorant masses, very much like politics as practiced in America today. F- let's go to Christianity. Weren't the masses held in Latin? Why were they held in Latin? Because the average European didn't even understand Latin. So only the priests could go uh, the mumbo-jumbo in Latin. And people go, wow, man, listen to that. They're talking to God in that special God language called Latin. The average person was bamboozled by it and uh, was awed by the priest. That was to keep the people in check. So now you go to Judaism. Again, it's in Hebrew. Most Jews don't even understand Hebrew. It's a foreign language to them. And they think that because a man can chant in Hebrew, he's smarter than them. He may or may not be smarter. He can also be dumb as a doorpost. And he could just be repeating what he was taught in a foreign language, which makes him sound more intelligent. Again, he may be a brilliant man. He may not be. But just because he can chant in Hebrew does not make him smarter than you inherently. So we have to now look into the religion itself, any religion. And if you kindly hear what I'm saying, you may actually agree with me, even though you want to hate me and disagree with me. My point is exactly what the man was saying in a certain way. I'm saying modern Jews may read Leviticus in the Bible, one of the books of Moses, but they don't practice what the Bible says literally. Unfortunately, there are too many Muslims on the planet who read the Quran and practice it literally. And so they throw homosexuals off buildings and they stone adulteresses. Do you understand what I'm saying now? I doubt it. Because, again, people don't want to understand what I'm saying right now. And that's the problem. People's minds are made up. It's not easy being intelligent or literate. Believe me, it's very difficult. It's easier to be stupid and to just make no, no sense out of anything and just say Democrat bad, Republican worse, and I'm better than everybody and this and that. I'm trying to elevate the discussion here, and I'm not getting anywhere. I have a feeling I'm not getting anywhere. So maybe we shouldn't even talk about it anymore. Maybe this was too biological, too genetical. Maybe it was too intelligent for talk radio. It's possible. It could be. It's just way beyond the scope of the average talk radio listener who wants to hear the same thing every day, day in and day out. Nothing different. Two tracks only. Well, okay, so that's that. So I did this. Now we have some sound I haven't played yet, but I, I don't know if I'm in the mood for the Hillary sound. Let's take some callers instead. KKOH, Reno, Nevada. Daryl, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. You were talking about uh, being inbred. I'm a product of that on my German side. I have a condition called HHT. That's hereditary hemorrhagic galactic tegia. Uh, when I bleed from my nose or internal, uh, I can go through, uh, say, uh, a 44-ounce McDonald's cup, and I can fill that up completely, empty it, oh. That's terrible. Now, wait a minute. You're saying this condition that you suffer from is a result of what? Being inbred on my German side. What? They married first cousins? Yes. Somewhere in our past history, uh, we were some sort of royalty, and they wanted to keep the bloodline pure. Uh, so stop it now so you're able to laugh at your own condition and, and your own breeding is what you're saying you've learned to actually laugh at it yourself i'll be in a restaurant or someplace what just take a bite of food and i'll get a bad nose bleeding and people come around oh my god you want me to call 911 oh i'm sorry to hear it that's well, a, I've used- that's a hard, that's that's a tough that's a tough thing to live with but I think the point of the call is that you're saying inbreeding definitely produced it, and you're recommending that my suggestion be uh, uh, passed, which is that marriage amongst first cousins be banned in all states. Isn't that what you're saying? Correct. That's all. End the story. You win the prize. Ring the bell. Government zero to you. They're burying them now in the bookstores. I need my savage army to get revitalized again before Christmas. It's only the 9th of December. I'm getting reports from the bookstores that they're putting them under feminine hygiene, under animal husbandry. 
If you go to look for Government Zero, you'll find it now under animal husbandry, uh, 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 female hygiene, things like that. You have to get it back where it belongs in the front of the store and uh, try to understand the discrimination that's going on against me is overwhelming. I have no support anywhere except amongst my own audience. And the message is what is important. I'm not trying to buy a new car. I have too many cars. I don't need a new house. I'm happy in the cottage in which I live. I'm telling you that the ideas are what matter. That's why I'm talking about government zero. And Daryl from KKOH in Reno, thanks for calling. It's terrible that you are suffering from that illness uh, as a result of, of inbreeding. Mike on KSFO Radio in my hometown of Sicko. Welcome to the show, Mike. What's on your mind? Yes, I was just talking. Uh, the in in you were correct in the uh, in placing the time of the law and leaving it there. In other words, those are the laws of the day. But in Islam, those laws continue. In other words, they're an eternal law. They keep going on and on, and they're re relevant in today's world. Well, are they relevant? You mean it's relevant to kill homosexuals? Well, that's what they believe. I mean, that's all right. Okay, I just wanted to clarify what you're saying. So my point is, is that while the Jews have the same laws, by and large, modern Jews do not do such abominable things as were done in biblical days, while unfortunately too many Muslims interpret the Koran literally. That's the problem we're facing. That's why you see lunatics running around with knives in London saying, kill the infidel, cut the hand off, and do such things as well as in this country. Why did those two pieces of garbage do that in San Bernardino uh, just last week? Why did those low-life subhumans do that? Why did they execute all of those innocent, nice people? Because their book, their holy book, told them to do it. Isn't that correct? That's correct. I mean, let, let's stop mincing words here. We're talking around the subject. Where did they get the idea that they had the right and the obligation to go and machine gun innocent people at a Christmas party? Where did they get it from? A Cracker Jack box? It is said that they were reading the Quran literally. He memorized it over and over again. He brainwashed himself. She brainwashed herself. It didn't come out of thin air. That is what we are talking about. That is what we are talking about. And my main point is, is that this idea of the sufficiency of a single book disappeared from Islam by the ninth century and yet you have Muslims who are practicing a seventh century form of Islam right now ISIS proposes a seventh century view of Islam Muslims who practice a literal interpretation of the Quran are practicing a seventh century view of Islam and I told you that by the ninth century this idea these ideas were already dropped by Muslims around the world this virulent hatred has only been reignited Rather recently, it is not something that the world has faced for hundreds of years. Do you understand that? Islam has gone backwards, not forwards. And it's all a result of a sect of Islam coming out of Saudi Arabia known as Wahhabism. And you have to research that on your own to understand why this is happening now. And maybe there's hope that eventually the modern Muslims in America and in Europe who have had enough exposure to Freedom will not want to be dragged back into the seventh century by their, uh, by their, let's say, the people that they know who are trying to pull them there. Maybe in the long run, the women will be the saviors of the world because they will, will refuse to be treated lower than cattle. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2600. Many of you are very perplexed because of the state of society, and rightly so. Moreover, many of you know that the world is a much un much more unsafe place than it was before this charlatan uh, inveigled his way into the White House with a little help from his friends in the media. But it got worse today, and I was saving this for the end of the show. Here is a day that should live in infamy. This man has no bounds to his hatred for, for the healing of the races. This man lives on hatred and div div division. This man has a name. His name is... President Barack Obama. So today, instead of celebrating and trying to bring races and religions together, this divisive, evil man 
chooses this day to talk about slavery as though it still exists in clip number 16. And that's what we celebrate today, the long arc of progress. Progress that is never assured, never Here guaranteed, but always possible, always there goes. to be earned. No matter how stuck we might seem sometimes, no matter how divided or despairing we may appear, no matter what ugliness may bubble up, progress, so long as we're willing to push for it, so long as we're willing to reach for each other. We would do a disservice to those warriors of justice, Tubman and Douglas and Lincoln and King, were we to deny that the scars of our nation's original sin are still with us today. I would say this is the lowest moment in his presidential career amongst many low moments. This evil, divisive man, this hateful, evil, divisive man, chooses a day like today, after a slaughter like we saw last week to attack America again, for a slavery that no longer exists and has not existed for over a hundred and some odd years. Again, trying to stir up one race against the other. Again, trying to make people uncomfortable for being in their own skin. Once again, he hit a new low. The man doesn't have any other capacity. Look how far he's gotten on hatred. Now, you talk about demagoguery. You talk about a driving a wedge between people. Look what they said about Trump for a few things he said about what kind of immigrants we should and should not have here. Every one of them kept saying the same thing, is that we're driving Muslims into the hands of jihadists, that we need to cooperate with Muslims in order to get them on our side. Jed Johnson, the man who let this happen by failing us, says that it's hurting us in our efforts at homeland security because we have to work with the Muslim community, not drive them away, not vilify them, not drive them into the shadows. And yet, the number one guy, Barack Hussein Obama, has the nerve to try to make white people feel as though they're still trying to enact slavery. To try and make black people, young black people in particular, believe that slavery could ever happen again in this country. Now, why doesn't Obama recognize that in order to heal the nation he has to reach out to his political opponents? Why doesn't he understand what he's doing is the most un-American thing that could possibly be done? That is actually hurting our efforts of unification. And that he is not working with the none, uh, let us put it this way, uh, people of color community. That he is driving away the white people. That he is vilifying white people. That he is driving white people into the shadows. That's what he's doing. That's all he can do. Because that's who he is. He is the scorpion.